Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs and in this video I'm going to do a quick pattern review and then also do a sew along for the next project in the Sew What series which is a two-piece knit set utilizing Simplicity 9226. Now before we get started go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into a very, very quick pattern review and then off to the sew along. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the pattern description. The pattern description for this pattern is a Mrs. Top and pull on skirt pattern. So the Mrs. Top has neckline and sleeve and sleeve variation and it also has a invisible zipper in the back. The skirt is a pull on skirt with two back darts and an elastic along the waistband. So that is the pattern description for this pattern. Let's go ahead and move over to notions. So the only, there's two notions that you need. Whether you're making A or B, you will need a nine inch invisible zipper. And then if you're doing the skirt, which is view C, you will need one and one fourth yard of one and one fourth inch wide elastic okay let's talk about fabric now i'm going to put the fabric up on the screen because it is from joann's and it is a navy ponte knit from joann's i'm going to put the actual picture because i take pictures of the bolt i'm going to put that picture up on the screen so you can see as well as in the description box below pattern pieces now for the top, you will only need four pattern pieces. For the skirt, you will also need four pattern pieces. I'm not gonna tell you the pattern pieces here simply because it's just your front, back, and sleeve, the neck band for your top. And then for the um, skirt, it's front, back, and then your casing pieces, front and back casing. But I'll also go in the pattern pieces when, we, when you go over to the sew along, you will see the pattern pieces used as well. Let's talk about pattern sizing. So this pattern comes in two pattern envelopes. The first pattern size is six to 14 and then 16 to 24. The size that I cut was a size 20. I cut a size 20 for the uh, top, which gave me a bust measurement of 40 and a half. And then for the skirt, I also cut a size 20, which gave me hip measurement of 46. Now I know you're wondering if you're a 44 inch hip, why did you cut a 46? Simply because I did take it in because my waist was a little um, smaller than my hips. So I took it in a little bit after cutting a size 20, okay? So yes, those are the size that I cut. Let's talk about modifications. Did I make any modifications to this pattern? No, I did not make any modifications, but I did make a slight modification. Now, the slight modification I did was to the skirt. Now, I did use one and one fourth inch elastic, but after sifting the elastic all the way through, I did create another stitching, zigzag stitch, at five eighths of an inch seam allowance, so my um, waistband looks like I used double row elastic, two rows of elastic, but I did not. I just stitched on the elastic. That's all I did. That's the only modification that I made to this pattern. Let's talk about did it look like the photos or the drawing and the pattern envelope on the pattern envelope. Yes, it does. Actually, it's funny because it looks exactly like the model on the envelope outside of I wore black shoes and she wore navy blue, but I used the same fabric. It wasn't intentional. It was just, I do not have a navy blue two-piece set. I have black, I have yellow. So it, I just figured this would look great in a navy blue. So that's why I picked up a navy blue ponty knit fabric from Joann's. Instructions. Let's talk about are the instructions easy to follow? Well, this is a beginner easy to sew pattern. So of course it is easy to follow as well as the sew along is easy to follow as well. Let's talk about likes and dislikes. There's no dislikes whatsoever. I love this pattern. It's an easy to sew pattern. When I first picked this pattern up, I wasn't really too much feeling it. And it's just because if you look at the model, it looks basic and plain. But this pattern reminds me of Simplicity 8982, which I have done before in a yellow. So I went ahead and picked it up and decided that this would be a quick and easy beginner pattern to sew up. All right, let's talk about first time experiences. Did I have any first time experiences? No, because this is a 
Easy, 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 beginner friendly, learn to sew pattern. All right, let's talk about what I sew it again. Yes, I do plan on sewing it again in a red ponte knit. So I will probably sew this again sometime in the near future in a red, that's my plans, but my plans always change, all right? So let's talk about recommendations. Do I have any pattern? Would I recommend this pattern to others? Yes, it's easy to sew. So yes, I would recommend this pattern to others as well as let's talk about my pattern rating. What will I stamp this pattern? I am going to stamp this pattern a five out of five um, for my pattern rating. I love it. It was easy to sew. I did not have any hiccups to the pattern or anything like that. All right, so that is my pattern rating. That is my pattern rating, that is my pattern review. Now that we have done the pattern review, let's go ahead and go over to the sew along. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next sew along for the Sew What series. This is project number four, which is a two piece knit set. Now I will be doing view B and view C on the pattern for Simplicity 9266. So let's go ahead and talk about the tools and supplies that you will be needing in order to construct this two piece set, which is a top and skirt. So you will need your rotary cutter. Of course you will need your pattern, of course. You'll also need rotary cutters. I use them for cutting fabric and cutting paper. So I use one for paper, one for fabric. I never mix the two there. Scissors, one for paper, one for fabric. I never mix the two there as well. You will need your marking tool. I have a disappearing ink, but because I am using a dark fabric, I will not be using disappearing ink. I will be using a white soluble pencil. You'll also need your tape measure to take your measurements. If you are not familiar with knit, I'll tell you how to take those here shortly. And then for the top, you will just need a nine inch invisible zipper that match your fabric. For the skirt, because this so along will be for both items. For the skirt, you will need one and one fourth yard of one and one fourth inch wide elastic. Now, that's all the supplies that you will need. So let's go ahead and talk about some additional supplies that you will need as well as the instructor. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the additional items you will need as well as the instructions for Simplicity 9226. So first I'm going to talk about the additional, the additional items you will need. Now, I highly advise you to use either a ballpoint needle or stretch needle for this project. You will not use a universal needle. Universal needles are for woven fabric. Make sure you have a ballpoint needle or a stretch needle in order to sew this together. You do not want stitches to be popping by using the wrong needle, okay? So it is very important that you use the right needle. Second thing you want to have on hand is either hem tape or twill tape. And the reason why is this will be put at your shoulder seams for your top to keep your shoulder from collapsing. After you wear it several times, it's just gonna be looking really weird if you do not have any, you know, anything to stabilize that area. Now I'm using hem tape because it's already in my stash, but you can use clear elastic, twill tape, or even seam by, um, binding. Um, that you purchase. Purchase seam binding, not binding, not binding that you make, okay? So you use one of those things or even ribbons. You can use something to stabilize it. You can even use interfacing if you choose, all right? But that's one thing that you want to use. Now let's go ahead and get into these instructions. So we are doing view A and view B, okay? I'm sorry, view B and view C. Now for view B, you will only need four pattern pieces. You will need pattern piece number one, the front, pattern piece number two, the back, pattern piece number four, the sleeve, and pattern piece number five, the neckband. Now for the skirt, you will need set six, seven, eight, and nine. So both, no matter which view you're doing, you're only going to need four for the top and four for the skirt, all right? Now let's take a look at the um, cutting layout quickly. Now, for me, I will be cutting a size 20, which I will explain that here shortly, but I am doing view B, so I need pattern piece one, two, four, and five, front, back, sleeve, and the neck band. 
And if you take note that on the pattern piece, it tells me that because I'm cutting a size 20 with a 60 inch fabric, I need to turn pattern piece number two on the wrong side of the fabric and cut down. So make sure you are looking at the layout in its entirety before you start cutting. Please note that all seam allowance is 5 8 of an inch as well. Now I do not need to show you the steps that we will take because this is a sew along um, and it will not take you very long to do this sew along, okay? Now I'm gonna move the instructions out of the way and now we're gonna go ahead and get into the pattern pieces. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the pattern pieces that you will need. I kind of already went over it, but you will need pattern piece number one, the front, you will cut this one on the fold. Pattern piece number two, which is the back, you need to cut two because you will have a zipper in the back, an invisible zipper. Pattern piece number four, which is your sleeve, you will cut two. I will be doing the short sleeve version of this. And then you need pattern piece number five, which is your neck band if you're doing view B. You will only be cutting one on a single layer for this. Now, if you're doing view A, you would follow the instructions for view A. I want the uh, neck band of view B, so I will be doing view B for mine, okay? Now, let's go ahead and go back to pattern piece number one and two, which are your front pattern pieces, okay? Now, right here at the top, you have the bust line. Now, my bust is a 40 and a half. Now, when you are sewing knits, you do not want to add so much ease. If anything, you wanna take about a half of an inch away in ease so it could fit onto your bust nicely. Now, I'm not taking anything away because my bust is a 40 and a half, so I am just going to sew a 40 and a half for that knit to stretch around my bust with no issues. Now, down here at the waist for a size 40, I took my measuring tape, okay? Now, make sure you measure your body correctly and accurately. All I did was went to the 20 line and measure all the way over and that gave me 10.75 or 10 and 3 fourths. I multiplied that by two because this is cut on the fold so you have two side seams. When I multiplied that 10.75 by two, I got 21.5. Once I got 21.5, I have to take away the seam allowance the seam allowance is 5 eighths of an inch. So 5 eighths of an inch times two is 1.25. So I took 1.25 from the 21.5 and got 20.25. Now that is the front, the waistline for the front. You will do the same for whatever size that you need. Just make note that you need to, uh, you might have to take some in because this is very roomy if you don't want all that room. So my front is 20.25, and I did the same thing for my back as well. I measured across the waistline and got 10.5 or 10 and a half, multiplied that by two, and then subtract by 1.25, giving me 18.5. So when I add the front, 20.25, and the back, 18.5, that gives me 38.75. Well, that's too big. However, I could go ahead and take it in, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is fit as I sew. And what that means is I will go from where it starts curving in, down, to take it in while I'm sewing instead of leaving it as much room as it is. Now, I am using a knit, so it will have a lot of drape and a lot of ease in the stomach area. I will determine how much I want once I try it on, okay? And you can do the same thing as well. If you need to take it in some more, you can, and I would highly advise you taking it in by a fourth of an inch at a time, and then just cut it off and resurge it, okay? That is my advice. I will not advise you to go ahead and make the adjustment to take it in on your pattern right now, okay? That's just my advice, but if you wanna take it in now, you can do so, all right? Now, let's go ahead and I'm gonna get into the fabric that I'm going to use and a way that you could save some fabric and cut out your pieces, all right? So let's go ahead and talk about fabric. All right, so now that we have talked about our tool supplies and instructions, let's go ahead and get into the fabric. 
Now, I will put my fabric up on the screen, but this is a Ponte knit that I picked up from Joann's. It looks like a scuba knit probably on screen, but it is a Ponte knit that I picked up from Joann's a few weeks ago when I figured out that I was gonna be doing this uh, so long for you. Now, a couple of things I wanna talk about is the way you cut it out. So I know some people just, you know, right sides together and you just put your fabric on itself. Now with knits, you can basically half it just to show how much you need to cut to not waste fabric. Now I am just going to cut this one out just to show you and transfer my notches. Now, like I said, I use a rotary cutter, so I'm just going to cut around my pattern and transfer the notches and dots. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have it cut out with my rotary cutter, I'm just going to take my scissors and slit, cut into my notches and transfer my dots. There's only one dot which is right here at my sleeve. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I never transfer those because I don't need to. I do my sleeves a different way, so I never have to cut those. But if you do what the instructions tell you to do, you will need to transfer that dot, all right? I will not be transferring mine, but that's a personal decision that I will make myself, all right? So now just go ahead and cut out all the rest of your pattern pieces now. All right, so now that I have all my other three pieces, pattern piece number one, pattern piece number four, and pattern piece number five cut out, I'm gonna show you pattern piece number two, which is the back. You will need to cut two. So this is not cut on the fold. Now, like I said, this pattern piece needs to be facing down on the fabric, where the wrong side of the pattern piece needs to be facing up towards you. You, all you're going to do is go ahead and put your pattern weights, if you're using washers, or like me, using some coins, whatever you use to cut out your pattern, make sure your grain line is straight up and down, and then just go ahead and cut all the way around. But I wanted to show you this so you will not make a mistake and cut it the wrong way, all right? So go ahead and cut out this last pattern piece, and then we could go ahead and get sewing. All right, so I have pattern piece number one. We are on step number one in the instructions. So I will, I will be bringing the instructions um, back and forth. Um, if need to clarify anything, I will um, have the instructions to show you what I mean by that, okay? My tutorials are straightforward, but just in case you may need some help, all right? So go ahead and grab pattern piece number one, which is your front, which was cut on the fold. Now I'm going to open mine up because I did mark number one because it's the same on both sides. Now, according to the instructions, you're going to attach front to back at the shoulders and then you're going to pin hem tape or twill tape or whatever you're using as your stabilizer in between. Now, what I did was I went ahead and basted my front, just the front section, at a half of an inch seam allowance. And I'll tell you why I did that. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hem tape right on top of that stitching line, okay? Now, this is my front, so go ahead and grab your back pattern pieces, okay? Which is pattern piece number two. You should have cut two, not on the fold. So I'm gonna open it out with right sides together. And what I'm going to do is place pattern piece number one with right sides together on top of pattern piece number two for the shoulder seams, okay? So I wanna make sure you can see this on camera. And what I'm going to do is pin at my shoulder seams, okay? Now also grab your hem tape and what you're going to do is you're going to place your hem tape onto that right after you pin. So I have my pins right here, and all I'm going to do is measure out my hem tape, just like this, and I'm going to cut two, one for each um, shoulder seam. So I have one there, and then I'm just gonna measure this and cut again. Which gives me two. 
That's all you need for your hem tape. Now what, you, what I'm going to do is pin this hem tape right on the center of my shoulder seams. And then I'm just going to pin. Now you're going to pin the hem tape on the front shoulder seam, not your back, on the front. So that's why I have my front laid on top of my back with right sides together. So go ahead and pin your shoulder seam, making sure you have your hem tape or whatever you're using as your stabilizer in the center of your seam. So go ahead and pin now. All right, so now that I have the front to the back with right sides together and I have my hem tape pinned to the center of my front seam, what I'm going to do is go to the sewing machine using a regular length stitch and make sure that you have a stretch needle or a um, knit needle that you have in your sewing machine and using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Go ahead and stitch across, then serge your seams or however you're going to finish them off and press your seams towards the back of your garment. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the front to the back sewn together with right sides together, I went ahead and sewed my shoulder seams and finished it off. This is what it's looking like on the right side. Make sure you press your seam allowance towards the back. So this is the inside. It should be pressed towards the back and this is going to be the back where the zipper is going to be, all right? So now after you do that, go ahead and move your top to the side and grab pattern piece number three if you are doing view A, grab pattern piece number five if you are doing view B neck band, all right? The instructions are the same. You should have already cut, if you haven't, you should have only cut one of your neck bands, okay? Now, this is my right side, the other side is my wrong side. Now, for the instructions, it wants you to fold the neck band in half a long ways with right sides together. So you have a notch there. So pin at your notch, notches. And then you should have two dots, okay? So just make sure you pin all the way down. After you pin, you have the option of going to your sewing machine and sewing a basting stitch to keep it together. If you would like to, I will not be doing that because like I said, I cut down on how many times I go to the sewing machine. But if you are completely new to sewing, you may want to think about going ahead and basting um, this seam allowance, I would just base at like three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Well, less than that, about a fourth of an inch seam allowance, just straight down um, the seam, just to keep it all together if you would like. You could do that if you would like. All right, so now that I have my neck band pin, I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and using three eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way across my neck band and back stitch at the end. Make sure you are using three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now one thing I want to make a correction, you will not sew this at three eighths of an inch seam allowance. You should have just basted this at a fourth of an inch seam allowance if you wanted to keep it together. All right, so that's the correction that I'm going to make because I did not sew my um, seams. I just have it pinned right now. Now go ahead and grab your top. And what you're going to do is with right side together, right sides together, you're going to pin your neck band to your neck edge. Now, a couple of things. Make sure your seam allowance is facing the back of your garment. Okay, do not have it roll into the front, so that's why you wanted to press it. The next thing you want to do is make sure that your dots right here match up with your shoulder seams. So I'm going to make sure, and you can use as many pins as you need. I use a lot, I use lots of pins, so I'm gonna make sure that that dot is matching up with my shoulder seams and my shoulder seams is towards the back. So I'm gonna pin the other shoulder seam the same way that dot to the shoulder seam. Now, after I have that, I am going to pin my center front 
Now you will make sure that you are stretching your neck band, not your top, just your neck band when you start sewing. And I'm going to make sure that my notches matches up in the back. And I'm just going to basically repin all of my neck band, my neck band to my top. So go ahead and pin. Now you may notice that the neck band does not fit that's perfectly fine. You will stretch only the neck band when you're sewing, not your top, just the neck band to make sure that your neck band fit onto your top when you start sewing at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So go ahead and finish pinning all the way around your neck band now. All right, so now that I have my neck band pinned onto my top, using 5 8 of an inch I'm sorry, using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna start at one end, back stitch at the beginning, and sew all the way around your neck edge and back stitch at the end. You're only going to be pulling your neck band. Do not pull your top because it will stretch it out of shape. So you only want to pull a little bit on the neck band just to, for it to give. Now, my little advice to you is what I do instead of pulling on it I just make little clips where I need to when I'm at the sewing machine so it could give so that's what I'm going to do to mine you could do whatever it is that you want to do to yours all right so go ahead and sew your neck band onto your top now all right so now that I went ahead and attached my neck band to my top it's looking really good no puckers or any of that good stuff you have to take your time around neck bands okay now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to going to trim the neck band down to a fourth of an inch by the neck area so basically by the zipper area I'm sorry so where that notch is right here there's a notch you're just going to trim that down to remove some bolt in the neck in the zipper area okay you're gonna do that on both sides so I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the other side and now you want to trim this neck edge right here down to about a fourth of an inch. So basically you're just gonna trim it all the way down as much as possible without snipping into your top. So go ahead and trim this down now. All right, so now that you have this trim down, what you're going to do is go ahead and finish off this edge right here. I'm going to finish it off with my serger, so go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have went ahead and finished off my neck band, it's looking good. Now, in the instructions on step number five, it tells you to stitch front to back at the side seams. I'm gonna show you this in the instructions. I'm not doing that because I'm go going to attach my sleeve and my side seam at the same time and then hem the bottom all in one go. So we're gonna skip over step number five. If you wanna do it on your own, you can, but I'm gonna skip over step number five and go to step number six, which is my zipper area, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is with right sides together, if you have never seen me do an invisible zipper, you've been missing a lot, okay? So the way I do an invisible zipper is normally different than what others may do for an invisible zipper. So the first thing I'm going to do is pin at my notch and then I'm going to pin the length of the center back where the zipper is, making sure that my seam allowance for my neck edge is facing down, down towards the um, garment instead of up towards the neck band. And make sure that your seam allowance match up. You do not want your seam allowance, your seams to be off, okay? especially when you have a zipper, okay? So go ahead and pin the rest of the center back where the zipper will be now. All right, so now that I have the center back pinned, what I'm going to do is using a basting stitch and 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to back stitch at the beginning, so all the way down to this notch. 
back stitch there and then switch to a regular length stitch and I'm going to sew from the notch all the way down to the end. Once I do that, I'm gonna press my seams open. Now before you do that, go ahead and finish off your center back seam with your serger or pinky shirt or whatever you want to finish it off with before you sew. Now you can finish it off after you sew them together as well if you choose, but I'm going to finish my seam allowance before I go ahead and stitch this together. So go ahead and base from the top to the notch and then using a regular length stitch from the notch all the way down to the hem. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and and sewed my center back seam with right sides together using a basting stitch from the top to the notch, which is right here, and then a regular length stitch from the notch down to the hem. I did go ahead and finish off my seam allowance with my serger before attaching um, my center back seams together. I also went ahead and put fusible interfacing onto just the seam allowance of my zipper area. So from the top all the way to the notch, I cut a strip of knit interfacing. Do not use woven interfacing. I'm gonna show you the interfacing that I used, okay? So it measure one inch across lengthwise, and then the height is nine inches. So I went actually 11 inches because I want it to go a little past the notch, okay? So it does go a little bit past the notch. So I did one inch by 11 inches to get that entire section of my zipper area. I did it on both sides, okay? Now I'm going to show you the interfacing that I am using for that area, okay? So it looks like this. It's very see-through and everything, okay? So the one that I am using is SK135 Sheer Knit Specialty Apparel Fusible Interfacing, okay? You can get this from Joann's, okay? Now, the next thing that you're going to do is go ahead and put your install your zipper. Now, I'm going to put this edge a little past the notch, okay? And I'm going to make sure my zipper is face down. So you want this part facing up, but you want the invisible zipper part down, okay? Now you're going to pin all the way up on one side of your zipper teeth. So I'm going to place it and make sure that my zipper is in the center of my seam allowance. And I'm going to pin all the way up. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that my one side of my zipper is pinned, now make sure you are just pinning on the seam allowance and not your top. You're going to switch your zipper foot to an invisible zipper foot that comes with your machine. If you do not have one, you will be using your regular zipper foot, okay? One or the other. And what I'm going to do is just base this zipper down one side and then down and turn it over and up the other side, okay? Just go ahead and base your zipper in place now. All right, so now that I have my zipper just basted onto my top, yes, I know it's up so far. I have a longer zipper because I like to get longer zippers than what it's called for to keep the zipper pull out of my way. I have said that before. Now, what I'm going to do is turn my top this way and I'm going to open up the zipper, you know, remove the basting stitch. So I could sew a permanent stitch on my zipper. So go ahead, making sure you do not rip a hole into your top and open up your zipper, remove the basting stitch and open up your zipper now. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the zipper, the basting stitch removed, I'm going to open out my zipper and it opens very good. So I'm gonna turn it this way. And now what I'm going to do is still with my zipper 
foot on my machine, I am going to sew using a regular, regular length stitch. I'm going to open out my zipper and stitch as close to the zipper teeth without sewing on the zipper teeth. You're going to do that on both sides. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and secured my zipper in place, you could zip your zipper up and see what it's looking like. It looks very good. So now the next thing I'm going to do with my zipper is turn your zipper out and you're just going to fold your zipper back and then in. Now, you want to, if you have any access like I do, you want to clip it off after you sew this. Now, I'm just going to take it to the sewing machine and tack it. You can do this by hand as well. Um, I'm just gonna tack it at the top a little bit and then I'm going to cut this excess off, okay? I do not want to cut it off now and then risk the chance of folding it and it's too short and then the zipper just come right on off, okay? So just take my advice and do it the way that I'm doing it because you're just gonna cut your excess off, but you're just going to, I'm gonna do it for you one more time, okay? You have your zipper out, you're going to take your zipper, turn it back, and then turn it inside. And all you're going to do is take a hand needle and tack it right here at the top, okay? That's all you're gonna do, or you could just create some um, machine stitches right here. It's completely up to you, but you, you will need to finish off your zipper. I'm going to finish off my zipper at the very end after I sew my sleeve. So I'm just going to leave it right there for now because it's not pressing and go ahead and move your top over to the side so we could go ahead and do the last part, which is our sleeves. Go ahead and grab your sleeves. Now, I'm gonna do this um, a little different than what the instruction says, and I think I told you that already. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, sew up my hem now. Now the hem allowance is one and one fourth, so what you're going to do is create a one and fourth uh, inch basting stitch across the hem, press in a fourth of an inch, and then press up to encase it, and then sew on the right side and sew that down. Go ahead and do that, then after that, you're going to make your gathering stitches. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the longest stitch on my machine, I'm going to back stitch at the single notch, and then go all the way around to this double notch and make sure not to back stitch at that double notch, okay? Now I'm gonna create the first gathering stitch at a half an inch seam allowance and the second one at 3 8 That way when I sew 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, I don't have to use the seam ripper to pick out gathering stitches, okay? So that's what I do, so go ahead and sew your hem and make your gathering stitches now. All right, so now that I have my sleeves, I have the gathering stitches at the sleeve cap, and I also have the hem um, stitched, okay? I have the hem in place. All right, so go ahead and grab your top. Now I have one sleeve already inserted. I'm just going to show you how I did that. So turn your sleeve just like this to where this U shape or the arm's eye area is facing you. Make sure that your seam allowance is facing the back. You'll know that it's the back because you have double notches, okay? Now what you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to go ahead and pin your sleeve into your armhole. Now I'm going to pin the single notch first. And then after I pin the single notch, that area, right, I'm gonna pin at the end. After I pin at the end, I made a little snip at the um, center. So if you made a dot, that's fine, but I'm going to find where I put that notch, which is right here, and that lines up with my um, seam allowance at my shoulder, my shoulder seam, okay? 
I'm gonna pin there. And then I'm going to pin that double notch in the back portion of my sleeve and then pin the end. So go ahead and pin those two places. Now what you want to do is you want to start in the front portion of your sleeve and make sure you, you know, distribute the gathers evenly in the front portion of your sleeve, okay? So I'm just going to make sure that my gathers are distributed evenly and then I'm going to pin all the way across the arm's eye area of my sleeve. So go ahead and do that now. Alright, so now that I have my armhole, my sleeve pinned into my armhole using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, starting at one end, you're going to back stitch at the beginning, so all the way around your sleeve and back stitch at the end. Once you do that, finish off your seam and then we will go ahead and sew our side seam. Now all you're going to do after you do that, you're just going to place the side seams with right sides together and then using a regular length stitch sew from the hem all the way through your sleeves using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance back stitch at the beginning and at the end and finish off your sleeves so go ahead and do your sleeve portion now all right so now that i went ahead and finished off my seam allowance well sewn my sleeve into my arms i finished it off the only thing left for you to do is go ahead and sew the side seam which all you're going to do is for the for the side seam, just make sure that with right sides together, you're going to pin your side seam from the bottom all the way through to the sleeves. So just make sure that you have the bottom lined up, pin there, pin at your notch that you have in the side seam. Pin your underarm seam, make sure your underarm seam is facing the sleeves and make sure you have that lined up pretty good. Pin the notch right here at your sleeve, on your sleeve, and then make sure that the hem of your sleeve is matching up as well. Now you can put extra pins in, you know, wherever you need to, which I will if I were you. And then what you're going to do after you pin it all the way up, um, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, sew your side seam and then finish it off with your serger. After you do that, you are going to hem. So you're going to hem the bottom of your top. Now I advise after you sew the side seam up, you go ahead and try it on and see if you need to take it in or not. If you need to take it in, I advise you to take in a fourth of an inch on each side and see if that works but use a basting stitch okay if it fits perfectly don't worry about taking anything in all you have to do is press up your hem so what i will do is uh, create a basting stitch one and one fourth press in a fourth of an inch and then press up to that basting stitch line and sew my hem in place once you do that, you are all done. Just make sure if you have not done so already, finish off your zipper. Once you do that, you are all done. Put your top aside so we can start working on the skirt. All right, so now we're moving over to the second part of this tutorial, which is the elastic skirt. I'm going to bring the pattern back so you can see right here we are doing, I am actually doing, I don't know if it's view C, well it's view C, but I shortened mine um, quite a bit. So from the top of the skirt down, I went 22 inches, which will hit right at my knees because I'm only 5'5". Five five. I don't need a long skirt all the way down to my ankles, not in the knit, you know, and plus it's hot here in Florida. So 22 inches to the knees because I could wear this to different events, okay? Because <laughs> I still have events going on for school, even though we're done. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing right now so now per the instructions i'm going to grab the instructions right quick too per the instructions 
you only have nine steps but so this is going to go really really quickly okay so let's go ahead and get into what you will need you will just need elastic some pins scissors a seam ripper if you need it all right i'm gonna take everything off the tray and go ahead and grab pattern piece number six i'm sorry number seven which i think is your back your back pattern piece is number seven and then just move everything else out the way all right, so on pattern piece number seven is your back. What you're going to do now, I'm not going to walk you through doing this, but the first thing I will say is pattern piece number seven, the pattern should have been facing down and you should have cut it all the way around and cut it on the fold, okay? Now, what you're going to do is go ahead and make your darts. We have made darts on this channel so many times so by now you should know how to make darts and i'm not going to walk you through how to do the dart but you're just going to go ahead and make your darts after you make your darts with right sides together you're going to attach your front to back at the side seams okay so after you make your darts make sure you press your darts towards the center towards the center is not towards the side seam towards the center of your back pattern piece or your back your back piece okay so press that to the center and then with right sides together you're going to attach your side seams so basically you're going to put pattern piece number six which is your front on top of pattern piece Number seven, right sides together, and sew your side seams. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my uh, darts in the back portion of my skirt, I have my front to back attached at the side seams as well. Go ahead and move your skirt off to the side and grab your uh, casing pieces. That's pattern piece number six, I'm sorry, pattern piece number eight and nine. So you should have cut one of each one, one for pattern piece number eight and one for pattern piece number nine, which is your back casing. Now they look the same and what I advise you to do is write an F for the front and a B for the back. So that's what I'm going to do to mine. So I'm just going to write, this is the back, wrong side, so I'm just going to make an F, which signify the front. And then on number nine, I'm going to write a B to signify the back casing, okay? Because they're not the same length, okay? They look the same length, but they're not the same length. Now, the next thing that you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to attach at the side seams, okay? So all you're going to do is make sure, well, first of all, make sure that you have them right sides together and attach at the side seam. Make sure that your notches are matching up as well. So you're going to pin both sides. So this is the one without the dots, okay? So just pin there. Now on the side where you have the dots, I'm just going to turn it around. On the sides where you have the dots, you're going to pin the notches. Pin the end. And then you want to pin where the dots are as well. So pin both dots. If you cannot see your dots, make sure that you um, mark it on the right side, okay? So I have a dot here and a dot there. I'm gonna darken them so you can see it on camera. So there's a dot here. And there's another dot right here. Now, what we're gonna do with these dots is when we start sewing, we're gonna start at like right here so what we're gonna do is on this side with the dot, we're gonna back stitch at the beginning, so all the way to the dot, back stitch at the dot, break our thread, and then start at this dot right here, back stitch, and then sew all the way up and back stitch at the end. On this side where we do not have the dot, we're just gonna sew all the way down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, 
and at the end and make sure you are using a regular length stitch. So go ahead and sew your side seams of your casing now. All right, so now that I have my front attached to my back casing, right sides together, and I sewed the side seams, except for on the seam where we have the dots, I just sewn up to that dot back stitch and then break my thread and then sewed, went to the second dot and then um, sewed that part too. Now what you're going to do is make sure you press your seams open, okay? Once you press your seams open, your side seams open, you're going to turn it with wrong sides together, okay? So turn it right side out with wrong sides together. Now you have the option of either just pinning it like I'm going to do, or you could baste all the way around your casing. So you can just go ahead and pin it like I am going to do. Now I may consider going to the sewing machine and basting it to keep it all together because it's easier that way. So what you want to do is go ahead and pin all the way around and then take it to your sewing machine and baste it if you would like. If not, just make sure that you press your casing all the way around. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my casing pin all the way around, I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and I'm just gonna use a basting stitch and sew all the way around my casing. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my casing done, all right, and I have it turned right side out and I gave it a press, you should have a little hole right here. This is where you will be inserting your elastic, okay? Now, go ahead and grab your skirt and just know what side is your back side. Your back side is the side where you have your darts. The front side does not have darts, okay? And what you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to go ahead and pin your skirt to your casing or your casing to your skirt, whichever way you want to say it, okay? Now, I want to say, make sure that the casing is facing you. You do not want to pin it this way, okay? So make sure the casing is facing you. Now, what you're going to do is match up your notches in the front and make sure that you pin your side seams as well. So I'm just gonna grab some pins and I'm going to match up my notches and my side seams and pin all the way around. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have it pinned all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to start on the side seam where I have this opening. I'm going to backstitch at the beginning, so all the way around and backstitch at the end. Now you may have to stretch a little bit on just your casing to make it fit. Do not stretch on your skirt, just the casing in order to make it fit, all right? So go ahead and sew your casing onto your skirt. Once you sew that, trim it down and finish off your seam allowance, okay? Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and sewn my casing onto my skirt. I went ahead and uh, finished off the seam allowance as well. Now, you notice that I do not have my label in and the reason why is simply because I will put my label in once I um, sift the elastic all the way through, then that way I know the elastic is not going anywhere. You put your label on now, the elastic may get caught and you will not be able to fit your elastic um, between where you attach your label. Now I'm just using my daughter's label because that's what she pulled out for me when she put my trays together because she does that. Now what you're gonna do is go ahead and grab your elastic. Now it calls for one and one fourth, but what I would do is measure to make sure that you have enough room. If for some reason you attached your casing and you use three fourths inch instead of five eighths by accident and you was on the wrong one, 
just make sure instead of trimming this down, just go get a one inch elastic instead of one and one fourth, okay? Just make the adjustment as needed. Now you're going to get a um, safety pin and go ahead and sift your elastic all the way through. Once you sift your elastic all the way through, you're just going to lap it over and zigzag stitch your elastic. Now your elastic should be cut whatever your waist length, waist measurement is plus one inch, okay? So if your waist is a 30 inch, add one inch to that, so you should be cutting a piece of elastic that measured 31 inches, okay? So once you do all of that, you're going to zigzag stitch it. After you zigzag stitch that, close up that opening, which is right here. Close that up. You could hand stitch it or you could go to your sewing machine and make sure you only have these two and um, stitch that closed. Now I'm just gonna use a hand needle because it's not much to close that. That's what I will be doing for mine. The last thing you need to do is go ahead and press up your hem. Now you have two options. You could serge it and then just press it up like this and don't worry about it. But I am doing a double fold because I want my skirt to look professional, okay? So what I'm going to do is create a basting stitch all the way around one and one fourth, okay? I'm going to press in a fourth of an inch and then press that fourth of an inch up to encase it into that one and one fourth inch and then stitch on the right side. Once you do all of that, you are all done with your skirt. That is all for this video. We have covered the pattern review and the sew along, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So I'll catch you in the next video, and as always, keep sewing.